イトルがマイクロフォン This song says Hallelujah. It would be a, a more kind of worship.
man is just really true the preaching. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Mana Mission Church UK, and it's time for the word. This is a step by step life transforming biblical teachings and preachings of the Mana Mission Church. We are an evangelistic home ministry that believes in the totality of the gospel of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. We know trying to equip fellow Christians to develop in the grace and knowledge of God, and we deliver messages that transform people who don't transform cities. You can locate us on the Fair 1 to Fair Free London Road, back in excess, IG 11, 8AA, a three minutes walk from the back in train station and just a minutes walk from the back in town centre. This afternoon, we have the honour to be spoken to by the man of God, Reverend Ebenezer Ablo, and he will be preaching about what happens when unusual preachers come to town. His main scripture will be from Amos chapter 6, verse 1. With a clap of and let's welcome the man of God to give us the word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap of friend. Hallelujah. Beloved, we greet you in the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Last week, we were on the life of Jacob. But this week, we will make a little bit shift and come back to the story of the selling of Joseph. Today we want to look at the subject what happened when unusual preachers come to town or better still you can say when unusual preachers come to town. The question you ask yourself is why should unusual preachers come to town? You know there is an amazing scripture in the Bible which is very difficult to digest. We have quoted it over and over and over, but still it is difficult to explain what Jesus actually means. In Matthew 11 from verse 11 when it says, since the kingdom, uh, since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the villain take it by force. We have tried to wrap our minds around that statement Jesus made. Many of us have misuse that verse for what it stands for so we want to have a look why does god send unusual preachers to town why would god send unusual preachers to town and our key scripture is from amos Chapter 6, verse 1. I would like someone to read it for me. Many of you know this scripture already. It says, Woe to you who are at ease in Zion. Woe to you who stand at ease in Zion. Why would Amos make this profound statement? Now, those of you who might not be familiar with the book of Amos, Amos is a, a fig picker, a sycamore picker, and a shepherd. He was from a little city about six miles away from Bethlehem called Tekoa. And he was sent to preach or prophesy during the time of Jeroboam in the northern kingdom. Even though there were prophets already in his days i told you there were the prophets there were other prophets over there like jonah the one who wouldn't go where god sent him and amaziah these people were the top top prophets during the time of amaziah hey, during the time of jeroboam jeroboam is a political figure king who has gone wayward but he has built two temples he has built two temples in the northern kingdom. 
he has stopped the people from going to Jerusalem to worship in the main temple. He built two temples and he filled this temple with idols. But in the midst of all these idols, the city was still prospering. They were sitting on abundant prosperity. So how can leaders who are worshipping idols, a king who has gone wayward, having prophets who are supposed to tell him the mind of God, the, all these prophets have compromised. They were enjoying abundance, prosperity, and they refuse to confront what is going on. So God picked this an unusual man who wasn't a prophet. He said he wasn't from a prophetic family. But God called him to go on the streets of Samaria. And he went to Bethel to deliver the word of God to them. And he was asked to leave town by the prophet Amaziah, was told to leave town. When you see God sending unusual preachers in town, you know that there are only two things. There is a judgment that is pending and God wants his people to repent before it's too late. Hallelujah. This is the time that God sent the prophet Amos to go and preach. And I, I, Amaziah was so furious that initially when Amos came, everybody saw, oh, there is a new preacher in town. There is a new church in town. Everybody want to be there. You know, when new things start, people come from north, south, east to join. They thought this ministry, the ministry of Amos, will be like the ones they know, their predecessors. Because there are new goals all the time. I don't know what Jonah was preaching. Unfortunately, we didn't hear the prophecies of Jonah. We didn't hear the prophecies of Amaziah. But this northern part of Israel, where growing leaves and bound, injustice were there. Idolatry were there. All kinds of things was going on. They were living in abundance. They didn't see in the judgment of God. So it's either Amos is a false prophet who has been sent. Or their prophet before Amos were the false ones. So in the realms of the spirit, there was a battle. And battle of all, if you remember, battle is where God first, Jacob met God and they made a covenant. But at the time that Amos was sent over there, there are shrines over there. And Amos delivered a message nobody wants to hear. Woe unto you who think everything is all right. You like the old way of worship. You are not concerned. You know that something is not right. Now, let's look at the things, some of the things Amos said. Some of his prophecies against this kingdom, that a prospering kingdom. Today, the church is sitting in abundance. The messages we have been hearing for the past 10 years is abundance, prosperity. Don't we hear there will be transfer of wealth from the wicked to the righteous? Churches are prospering. If you see some of the edifices we are even building, the musical instrument, how our pastors, some of the prophets, amazing money is flowing into the church like no man's business. Yet, from everybody, ushers, singers, church members, leaders, pastors, we are all corrupt. People are taking bribe. People are making all kinds of money, illegal money, and still bringing it to the church. Nobody cares. We are all having a form of godliness, but we have denied the power of God. This is why God has to raise people like Amos to come and speak for God. Because the people who were supposed to speak for God, 
They have abundance. They are driving luxury cars. Their bank accounts are inexcessive. Their services are mixed with multitude people. Until this guy begin to deliver his message. You see, they said a preacher is known by the message they preach. The unusual preachers God sent, unusual people God sent, they don't preach the usual message. The people crowded. A new ministry has begun. I don't know what name they gave to Amos ministry. But when he began to preach, they all left. No, we don't want this kind of preaching. This is not the kind of teachings we want. This is not the kind of preaching. Let's go back to our old way of worship. Let's go back to the churches we came from. This young man who has come, we don't know what has happened to him. This is not the kind of preaching you want to hear. When was the last time you heard the preaching of repentance? Unusual preachers that God sends, they preach preaching of repentance. The young unnamed prophet that was sent many years before Amos, who came and it was said not to eat bread in battle. We realize that in the same battle, the same place, there were other prophets, apart from Jonah and Amaziah, there were other prophets that God has stopped using them. God sent this young man, we don't know his name, he said, come and preach against what is happening. Political leaders have corrupted themselves. They are calling the nations to do abominable things. Publicly, they have made gay and homosexuality and lesbianism popular on every street everywhere beloved when you see the gay the lesbians the homosexuals publicly displaying on the street you know there is a judgment coming is the coronavirus a coincidence let me ask you have you heard a young preacher in your suburb your neighborhood your town on the streets where you live have you heard new brand of preachers preaching repentance they may not have congregation they may not have nice choir behind them singing they may not have the best singers in the town gracing their puppet in the public before what do you think of this young vibrant young breed of preachers everywhere now who are not condoning with the previous i'm not saying all the churches are corrupt no but when you see god raising unlikely people to preach you know that it is between judgment and repentance something is about to happen what is the message of Uzziah, eh, amos amos said some few things i want us to look in amos 6 1 and verse 4 and verse 5 and verse 6 he said woe to you who at ease in zion who lie on beds of ivory, stretch out on your couches, eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the store. So he was saying these people have become so rich that they are, sick, they are sleeping in ivory beds. Do you know how much an ivory bed costs? They have become so rich. They are stretching themselves. They are comfortable. He said they eat in abundance they are eating prosperity they are living in the midst of prosperity but corrupt corruption is all around one of his message was against this prosperity business why is corruption looms around corruption is all around and he went ahead and he said you recline you are sleeping on foam rubber couches you are enjoying fillet of food. Your feast and your lump chops are amazing. You have no lack, abundance. Yet the sword of Assyria is hanging over the city. And none of these prophets could see. So God in his own mercy raised this 
unusual farmer. He's never to, been to Bible school before. He was so rough. His preaching were all over the place. But potent, powerful. It pricks the heart of the people. In fact, when the Prof, uh, the false prophet Amaziah heard it. He said, who can hear this? Get out of this place. This is not the kind of church we want. This is not the kind of messages we want. Get out of town. Go back to where you come from. Hallelujah. In verse 5 he said, you who sing idly to the sounds of strange instrument, string instrument, and invent for yourself musical instrument, Beloved, can't we see? Today, there are all kinds of improvement in our praises and worship. Go to every church. We have all kinds of lights, music, instrument, musicians. Music is growing links and band. In those their days, it was there. They have great festival. Their services are bound with great musicians. But in all this, God wasn't in there. Hallelujah. Their music, like that of today, was taking them further and further away from God. And it's strange how Amos even mentioned their music. Today, you cannot come. Almost like every week, new church music is coming. We don't even know which one to sing anymore. There are new songs everywhere. From every nose, every corner new songs are coming new musicians are coming and among these there are people that have infiltrated the musical kingdom for money not only money some are using all kinds of spirits which are not of god to entice the body of god he said you have invented musical instruments but god is far away from your service Verses he said, Who drink wine from bowls? Can you imagine? <laughs> the prophet said, Before you used to drink wine from cups, but you were not satisfied. You were not satisfied. You are not satisfied anymore now that you are you have become so rich, you are no longer drinking wine from cups, you are using bowls, you are using calabash. Some of you, you have, you have lied, you, your cups in your home are all gold plated. We have become so wealthy. Some of us, even the chairs, the chairs we sit in the chair, have you noticed recently? The chairs that some people have in their churches, it's like palanquin. <laughs> gold plated. Amazing living in abundance why the people are perishing enter into some homes of some of us the preachers even our tap the tap in our houses are all gold plated everything is gold plated money is nothing in a week or a day we can blow money like they are coming from they are raining down from heaven prosperity they were drinking wine from a bowl they were not satisfied with a little glass of wine they drink it from bowls calabash big bowls what does it mean it means drunkenness have taken over now sometimes people are not only drunk with wine maybe you might say no this is too detached but do you know people are drunk with power? That's why a whole generation have been going for in demonic spirit to do church. Power drunk. They are drunk with powers of sorcery. And they are making church with it. Do you know why? For money. Why is they are selling the souls of their congregation to the devil? Hallelujah. Amen. These were the things that were looming. In chapter 5, from verse 21 to 24, the Lord said, I hate, I despise your feast days. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offering, I will not accept them. 
take away from me the noise of your songs. I hate your feast. I hate your services. Even your, the song that you people have been singing, it's a noise in my ears. It irritates my ears. I hate them. And what did God requested in the place? He said, let justice run down like water. And righteousness. Righteousness means right standing with God and right standing with men. Hallelujah. Amen. Righteousness. Many of us are in the church. We are not standing right with our neighbors. Even your church member, your church member, you are not standing right with them. Because they may have offended you. They may have borrowed money from you and you, they didn't pay. And you too, Bible said that anyone who borrows money that and does not pay is a wicked person. You have borrowed money from a church member. He, you said your, you sold your story so nicely. And he told you, this money, I have saved it for something. But because of the way you spoke, I am giving you this money. Please honor your promise and bring it to me so that I will put it over there. And you thank him and you took the money. Maybe the person told you this money, it is not mine, my Christian brother, my Christian sister. This money is not mine. It is for brother or sister, so so and so. Or it's for this purpose. But because of how you told me your nice story, I will take this money and give it to you. Please, please bring the money on time so that by the time the owner will come, the money will be ready. And you took the money. Years have passed. You still haven't paid the money. You are still holding on. You don't care about all that that person did for you. Jesus have mercy. I said, Jesus have mercy. Amen. Injustice. You are not stand, we are not standing right with our fellow believers. Some of us, we are not even talking. It's too fast, man. Amen. We are not talking to one another. Yet we come to the same church and lift praises and lift our hands in worship together. No, we are not together. We are divided in our hearts. But we claim we are worshiping God. What did Jesus say? If you come to the church to even give an offering and you have something against your brother, you have a problem with your brother or sister, Leave the money at the altar. Go and reconcile with the person and come. But we still stand in the church. You have taken the money. You have borrowed something. You have done something to a sister or a brother. You know it. They've been speaking to you over and over. But you are callous. You don't care. You still come to church. And you are the one who makes the most noise. For everybody to know you are spiritual. You have taken bribe from your working place. You have taken bribe from the school. You are a teacher, headmaster, headmistress, police officer. You are a Christian. But you live on bribe. You don't touch your wages. You don't care. Even though Bible proverb is against someone who takes bribe and said, if hand join to hand, even if you walk, you or your somebody's hand, you will not go scot free. But you've been taking bribe. We are doing all kinds of things. And our preachers cannot touch it. Because the money is flowing. They are afraid to preach righteousness. This is when God sends unusual preachers. He said, what about you? I don't like your feast. I don't like your feast. And in chapter 9 verse 8, Amos says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are on the sinful kingdom. The eyes of the Lord. 
and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Beloved, that wicked machinery, that wicked kingdom, that wicked government, that wicked government, the Lord will crumble it. Look at it. Look at this country. We live in UK. Look at our PM. When he took ill of Corona, people were praying, even little children. Little children like my own children were all praying for his survival. God mysteriously healing. And because he didn't know God, he came and he was praising the NHS. And he was giving credit to some doctors and nurses who stood on him 24 hours. Is it better than those who died? The prayers of children in this country, people lifted prayers for him. But because God is far from his thought, he never acknowledged God for once. He was giving praise to humans. This is how far the nations have gone. They will give credit to their machinery. Nebuchadnezzar said, look at Babylon that I have built. Isn't that amazing? The Bible said, while the words were still in his mouth, God turned him into an animal, sent him into the forest over three years for boasting. All Christians who live in UK, please let us pray for this country. Because the way our leaders are boasting on our NHS and the doctors of the NHS, the nurses, the system is not holding. What are we boasting? I don't know about your country. I don't know what you are boasting in. This is the message Amos delivered. Nobody likes to hear that kind of message. Verse 11, the Lord said, Amos 9, 11, the Lord said, On that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damage. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. Hallelujah. In the midst of all this calamity, God will raise people. Hallelujah. He will raise his church. He will raise you. God will touch you. Maybe by you hearing this message, God is already communicating with you. That we need to live righteous and practice justice. The prophet Micah will say, he has shown you, oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk with your God in humility. In Acts chapter 15 verse 16, he said, After this I will return and will rebuild the tabernacles of David, which has fallen down. Even Paul, the writer, was referring to Amos. Beloved, when you see, you as you see the unlikely preachers on your street, what message do you think God is passing to you? Do you know why John the Baptist came? John the Baptist is an unlikely preacher God raised. He was born into a priesthood family. His father, Zachariah, was a priesthood, royal priesthood. But this guy, look at what is happening in the priesthood family and said, I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be part of this corruption. So he chose the desert. He became an unlikely preacher. A preacher who didn't follow the norm. A preacher who didn't preach the preachings of his time. What was his message? Repent. Repent and be baptized. Unlikely preachers. Unusual preachers that God brings. They preach repentance. Hallelujah. When the system is so corrupt, beloved, I might, I might confess this. I was so afraid. As at last year, I was scared the way the nations were going. The way wickedness was increasing. It looks hopeless, but we were praying that somehow, some way, God should come through. And God should put a hold to the way evil is running with us like a rocket. And lo and behold, this year, God came in and freeze everything. When was the last time you heard the noise from any gay society? 
LGBT community. When was the last time you heard their voice? When coronavirus is all over the place. One viral has silenced everybody. Hallelujah. And this is the time. We, the backsliding church, the way we are backslided, this is when we have to change something and come alive. I don't know how you have served God in the past. I don't know how you were serving God until the COVID-19 came. But beloved, if you were just going through the ritual, David said, I used to go. <coughs> I used to go through the rituals. I used to follow with everybody. I used to, I used to, I used to. Until one day I woke up to the truth. Beloved, may we wake up. Hallelujah. Amen. There has to be a time when we pause. There has to be a time when we say, what are we doing? John the Baptist said, Behold, the axe is under the tree. His axe is in his hands. Just like Amos was telling them, the sword of Assyria is hanging in the air. Either we repent or we'll be all cut off. They didn't repent. Assyria came, took them away. And the ten tribe of Israel disappeared into Assyria. John the Baptist said, the axe is under the tree. And the tree that is not bearing fruit, he will chop down and burn it with an unquenchable fire. Please listen to the sound of John. He said, unquenchable fire. If you are standing today and you haven't been chopped off, please begin to bear fruits of righteousness. Hallelujah. Before it is too late, his axe is in his hands. But he hasn't brought it down yet. Maybe today, you might be a preacher. You might be a church goer. You might be a Christian. But what kind of Christianity have you practiced in the years? When you see unlikely preachers on the streets, today there are unusual preachers on every street. They don't follow the routine. You don't hear them preaching prosperity over you. You don't hear them prophesying that your business will go well. You don't hear them prophesy the normal prophecy. Their message on the streets are simple. Repent. Repent. These are the unusual preachers God sent. And they have been sent abundantly in our time. <coughs> Can we heed the warning? Can we heed the warning? And amend our ways before it's too late my sister my brother my fellow preacher politicians wherever you are examine yourself examine your heart are you hearing an unusual preacher in your, in your neighbor but you prefer the old ones the ones you are used to the one who makes you feel comfortable. Oh, gorgeous church buildings. The music is amazing. The preaching makes us feel good. The preaching makes us ambitious in this life to be rich. The preaching puts us in the state to develop ourselves so that we become politicians, we become other things. It doesn't matter whether we live righteous or not. Are these the preachers you listen to? Watch out for the unusual preachers that God has released. Their message is simple. Repent before it's too late. That was the message of Amos. That was the message of Isaiah. The old system said, Keep quiet. Amos, keep quiet. Stop this kind of preaching. You will not have a congregation. Change your message. 
you will not have your listeners. Or go, even go back. Go and learn how to preach. We don't do it over here like this. Nevertheless, he went ahead to prophesy. Oh, and how his prophecy came to pass. He was the only person who was warning that calamity is coming. When all the prophets surrounding Jeroboam were quiet. And Jeroboam had idols. He built two temples. He built two temples. Filled them with idols. And they were prospering. No sign of evil. John the Baptist came. The political, the, the Christianity, no, the Jewish leaders, the rabbis, and the Pharisees, the Sadducees, have all joined politics. They have become political religious people. Today, there are many of our preachers who have tied their clothes to political leaders to presidents of their nation. They said Daniel was a political figure in his days. Nehemiah was a political figure. So it's good for a Christian to be. I'm not saying Christians shouldn't go into politics. But whilst you are there, what advice are you giving to your political leader? What advice? What influence are you having? Look at America. The people surrounding Donald Trump, they are influencing him positively with God. Is that what you are doing? If you say God has called you to be a political preacher, a preacher, but he has called you to be a political leader or go into politics in your nation, wherever you are, what advice are you giving to your political leader or your, the president of your nation? Have we become like the Amaziahs, the Jonas, who are seeing the evil that the king is doing and they kept their mouth shut. What influence? When John the Baptist came, the same thing. And you know what? He was not afraid. The unusual preachers are not afraid of anybody. They call spade spade. John the Baptist told the people, you, you are generation of vipers. You are the children of snakes. Wait a minute. You call the religious folk, the people who have built the church for years. You call us children of snake, evil people. That was the message of John the Baptist. Wow. Can you preach like this? What kind of preaching are you preaching? When was the last time you rebuked sin? When was the last time you saw something in your country, your nation? And you spoke about it like some of us have been speaking on the streets of London. When was the last time you stood for God in your nation? Maybe you are not a preacher, but you are a church member. When was the last time you also stood for righteousness? May the Lord bless you. This is not a message of condemnation. It's a wake-up call. Can we wake up in times like this? And fish out for the unusual preachers that God is sending. Maybe you were in the ministry with an unusual preachers like us. Like some of us. But you didn't like the preaching we were preaching. You thought our preaching was uncomfortable for you. That's not this kind of... No, 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 no. This is not the kind of preaching you expected. When you joined that ministry, everybody left Amos. The sycamore picker. The shepherd from Tekoa. He had nobody to stand with him. Yet he continued to preach. And how his prophecies came to pass. I could just imagine those who left his ministry to join Amaziah and join Jonah. Wow. John the Baptist was all in the desert. Until because of his preaching, the same preaching, he was beheaded from speaking the, for speaking the truth. But unusual preachers, they don't condone. They are not afraid. Hallelujah. May you not be afraid to speak the truth. May you be bold and stand with an unusual preacher and say, I will support you all throughout. I will be with you. Some people stood with John the Baptist. 
even when he was beheaded, they went for his decapitated body and they went to bury it. Are you standing with an unusual preacher? Is there a preacher in your neighborhood or a new preacher who has come, has surfaced, who has been speaking righteousness, who has been preaching repentance? You have identified him. Are you also going to desert kind of a preacher? Or are you going to stand with him like John the Baptist's disciples stood with him until the day he passed away? I challenge all of you listening to me. Try. Search. Open your eyes. Search the website. Search the social media. Search your neighborhood. You may come across one of these unusual preachers. They preach repentance from evil. They preach that we should live righteous life. Identify with them. Bible instructs us to fellowship with people who call the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't run away from sad people. They are the voice of the Lord in the corrupt time. The Lord bless all of you. I want to call my brother Edda Stephen Afute to say a word of prayer Pray with all of you who have listened to us this afternoon that you will begin to pray for God to guide you to line yourself up with this unusual preachers God is raising in our end times. Don't desert them. They might not have big churches and big congregations. They might not drive luxury cars. They might not dress in this beacious and ho -ho -ho and this kind of untold and undescribable cloaks they might be simple ragged rough some of them have grown beard some of them they don't even having dressed properly but don't let that fool you they might look like a shepherd a fig picker look at john the baptist he dresses wild yet he was the voice of god in the wilderness hallelujah my brother come God bless all of you. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all our listeners this afternoon. Those who are listening to us and their offices, their homes, <coughs> wherever you might, you might be listening to us, we are praying that wherever you've gone, the Lord will protect you. Amen. And we pray that there will be a repentance in the heart, in your heart. We pray for repentance. We pray for forgiveness of the land. Father God, we have sinned against you. The nations have rebelled against you. The churches have sinned against you. But this afternoon we pray, Jehovah God, that you have mercy upon the church. You will have mercy, O God, on the land. We've turned our back against you. Father God, we've done all all sort of evil against you. Father, this afternoon we pray for forgiveness. We pray for repentance, O oh God. We are asking that Jehovah God don't deal with us according to our iniquities. But we pray that God, you have mercy on the land, O oh God. Have mercy. We have done evil. We have done all kind of evil against you and against your servants, against you, O oh God. But this afternoon, Father, we pray for forgiveness. We pray for repentance. For our pray, Jehovah God, that you forgive every one of us. Father God, forgive us, O oh God. Have mercy on the land. We pray for repentance. We pray for forgiveness. We pray that Jehovah will surrender, O oh God, all our will. That God, you have mercy on us. Have mercy. And accept us again, O oh God. Accept us. Father God, we we'll depend on our money. We we'll depend on the leaders of this world. And we've gone astray, no God. We we'll turn our back against you. But this afternoon, God, as your word has come, oh God. As your word has come, we pray for forgiveness. We pray, Jehovah God, have mercy on every one of us, oh God. We pray, Father God, for the church. That you will have mercy on the church. Mercy, oh God. Men and women of, of God, they've preached all sorts of all sort of gospel, all sort of things that is not relevant in the in the Bible. But this afternoon, Lord, what we have heard, we have heard, oh God, your word. 
Therefore, we pray for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless you, that Jehovah God, you have forgiven us, O God, of our sins, of our iniquities. Like Peter said to Simon, repent and you, for, you will be forgiven. We thank you, Jehovah God, you have repented. We pray for righteousness in the church. We pray for righteousness in the church. We pray that God will walk in righteousness, we walk in love, we walk in obedience to your word. That will do what the word of God says. We thank you this afternoon. We bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. We have just heard from the man of God and we hope that you have been blessed by the key points from the message that we should repent for the coming of the Lord is at hand. It's time for the word is brought to you by the faithful friends and family of the Mana Mission Church here in the UK. At Mana Mission Church, we proclaim the gospel of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ with clarity. It is our prayer that you join this family in worship on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. and on Fridays for prayer meeting from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. When, unfortunately, when the lockdown is in full. Okay. Until then, please remember that the words that we speak to you are spirit and life, for it is the spirit that gives life to the body. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 and John chapter 6 verse 33 and 63. Stay connected and God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, we want to thank you for giving us audience wherever you are this afternoon. It's our prayer that by the time this lockdown is over, you will reconnect to God, the service of God, and carrying the name of the Lord will be meaningful to you. Remember, the Bible said that all those of us who call upon the name of the Lord and we say that we are children of God or we know the Lord, we should ask of ourselves if the Lord knows it, if the Lord indeed knows us. So whilst you are saying you are a child of God, you know God, you also have to ask yourself, how does the Lord see you? Does the Lord know you? Are we living in righteousness? Are we practicing justice? Are we doing justly? Do we love mercy? Are we walking humbly with our God? Now, I pray, we pray for every one of you, those of you who might be ill in your body, may have any kind of challenges mentally, physically, spiritually. We pray in the name that is above every name. We pray healing upon you. Healing upon your home. Healing upon your life. Your body. Your soul. Your spirit. Those of you who have lost, lost a uh, loved ones, during this plague, we pray divine healing and restoration to you. We pray that the life beyond where we will go from here will mean more to you than this physical life. Remember, no matter what we acquire in this life, we cannot take them with us. And this life we live in is a temporal life. It's a transit. You don't make your transit place your permanent place. You don't build wealth in the place where you are making the transition. You build wealth in your eternal home. May we change something. May the words of the Lord transform you, turn you around, set you on the right path to walk, walk with the Lord. We pray healing. We pray salvation. We pray revival and recovery to you physically, spiritually, and mentally. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you discover God in this time of epidemics. And may you live the rest of your life and serve the true and the living God. Get rid of all that does not matter. Get rid of all the wicked things. Let us throw away all the idols we have kept to now and return to the true Bethel. 
the Bethel God called Jacob to. Now they have built a shrine over there. May we forsake that kind of Bethel, come to true Bethel. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and your home. Amen. 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 So, pray that you lead us to take the communion. First Corinthians chapter 11.